What's cracking, guys? Omar Isaf here, here with a very special guest. We got Eric Helms in Toronto. You're one of the few people in the industry I do highly respect and look up to you. Like Eugene Sandow, the, uh, a lot of you guys might know about him. And you think to yourself, all right, like the he's an outlier. Like there's only one of him and he's a genetic anomaly. Like he looks phenomenal. But the amount of people you've been posting has been insane. And maybe that's a good conversation talking about fat free mass. In they used a small sample size of just people in a gym who'd been lifting for two years in LA. And based on that sample, they said, hey, you know, the highest we saw was a 25 fat free mass index uh, among the, the non steroid users. Therefore, that's the natural limit. Yeah. And then, ironically, in the same document, uh, they list the estimated fat free mass indexes based on just a visual assessment of like magazine covers from the 40s and 50s of, right. what, we, of what they thought the Mr. America's winner's body fat was. They estimated the body fat percentages and therefore the fat free mass index of the pre-steroid era um, uh, Mr. Americas, uh, which was from 1939 to 1959. Yep. And you could argue that, you know, in the mid 50s to late 50s, there's probably some steroid use going on. Definitely in like the 40s, pre-1950, and if you really want to get crazy and get all conspiracy theory about how they could have got access to it. I love me. You could look at like 1944, okay. 1945 and yeah. earlier, it's definitely natty. But even among those guys, there was a good number who had a, over a 25 fat free mass. Yes. There just aren't like hardline limits in physiology. There are limits for individuals. Yeah. But when you look at the broad population and just the way physiology works, it's gonna be a spectrum. Yeah. of all the crazy genetics that are out there. Yeah. But you look at two different animals that you think there's not the same species, they're both fucking dogs. Yeah. You know, so there's a similar genetic diversity among people. I mean, these are people from the pre-steroid era that if we take a look at A, their feats of strength, like what was that guy's name, Herman? Herman Gorner. Yeah. yeah he was incredible. You know, he, he uh, was a, a lifter who competed and also was like a strongman performer. Yeah. Uh, and in like the pre-1920s, 1910 era, uh, he deadlifted 793 pounds. His name is John Lem, the Swiss Mountaineer. Yeah. He was a wrestler in the early 1900s, and he was 5'8". Oh, once again, through all these lifters, the very notion that 23, uh, 25 sorry, is the absolute limit is just not only untrue, but it, it can be detrimental. And some people might say to you then, Eric, well, wait a second, bro. Like, okay, whatever. So 25 is not the actual limit, but you're looking at the elite of the elite. Yeah. So what is it really the elite of the elite? Yeah. So this was a time when there was one fifth of the world's population and lifting was so unique yeah. that it was a circus act. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go across the street to the gym. There weren't gyms. Nutrition is so much more optimal now a lot of these individuals we see what I first noticed when you show me photos I'm like yeah they're uh, pec development they didn't have a bench press they didn't have any of the tools that we have now and there was people pressing more than like like sometimes approaching two times body weight that's in a military press yeah it's insane yeah you know? so it, it was a different era and uh, but it's really useful to look back at that and just see the the, the, the depth of the human genetic possibilities and yeah. it's true so it's possible for me yeah you have to have a deeper more intrinsic reason to be lifting and just trying to achieve something impressive. I think you did a great video on this recently, like, why do you lift? Yeah. Um, and, and that's a question that is much more important than where can I get? Because if I can't get there, I should just use roids or give up. Yeah. And, and why even set that arbitrary number for yourself where well, you don't know your own potential, right? It's Absolutely. like you're too, it's like you're just a few years in. It's like for most people, it's like you've been training for what, like 15 years, you said? 15 years, yeah. Yeah. People tend to think it's like it's just gonna happen like that. And mm -hmm. so maybe some people are just, I don't wanna say afraid of putting in. And they'd be like, oh, this judge has screwed me, I placed 10th. Yeah. And that makes you feel good right now. Yeah. But what you don't realize is that if there's only external reasons why you're placing poorly, yeah. then what do you change? Nothing, better give up. Yeah. You know, questioning if it's worth it. And that's part of the process of making it a lifestyle. Yeah. So I understand it's a stage, like I don't fault anyone for that. But if you don't grow out of that, you're not gonna be long for the iron game. Yeah. And you're gonna miss out on all the, the emotional and physical growth you could get. Yeah, ask when does it matter? If someone's trying to sell you something and you know they've achieved it, by other means than what they're selling. That's, that's fraud. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess we'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Peace.